for uh, the passage to l'Equateur. All right, for the crossing of the equator. Cheers to Neptune. Yeah, it's a little warm. Last we were here was on November 16th. So we're back with the head straight now, the Northern Hemisphere. Feels good. It marks the final stretch to Les Sables d'Olonne, but the weather hasn't been easy so far. And indeed, it gets worse. Armel followed around the equator 17 hours and 49 minutes later by Alex Thompson is stuck in the up to their reputation doldrums. Both men will face the best they can the Osaurus High, which is going to block their way at the beginning of the week. The Pacific also has its doldrums own pacing, especially for the skippers around the Point Nemo, the most isolated place on the planet. On board Mikaline, we're by 52 degrees south. You'd think we're in the weak trade winds. It's rather nice. But here's the lowdown. There's a nice side to it, but it's also stressful because we're not going fast at all. It's a real war of nerves. We've got a high pressure barrier in front of us, the Antarctic exclusion zone. The AEZ obviously prevents us from going south to skirt it. So we've got to cross it and it's moving along eastwards with us. This high pressure bubble is quite a nuisance True, once we pass it, we'll have magical conditions, a smooth sea, weather is beautiful. We see the light of the ice flow on starboard reflecting the sun. During the night, it's absolutely unbelievable. But from a racing point of view, it's a real disaster. In the end, I prefer 35 knots winds in a depression. Ironically, the only competitor who fully appreciates his race is the last in the ranking, Sébastien de Stremont. Here, I'll let you enjoy. Enjoy this happiness. 30 knots winds, a reef in the mainsail, sunshine, wearing a short, a t-shirt, it's wonderful.